All right, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. I'm, uh, I'm answering some mail here. Uh, a lot of people send questions about uh, various topics that um, I, I don't do an entire lesson on or a series. Um, so I thought it'd be better to answer these questions using this format here, a little less formal than, you know, classroom uh, setting. So I've got one question here from a viewer. Um, he says, uh, I've heard previously the teaching that when you go to heaven, you become part of the Holy Trinity or part of the Godhead in some way. Uh, he wanted to know, can you refer me to specific literature and so on and so forth, which, uh, which I did. Uh, this brings up a, a question that comes up uh, quite often, but in, in various forms, you know, what happens after we die and so on and so forth. A lot of different opinions about that, uh, and uh, I would imagine that our pre-millennial friends um, in evangelical churches uh, and charismatic churches, uh, they have a certain viewpoint about this, uh, actually quite complex and complicated uh, viewpoint about what happens at the end of uh, the world. And uh, I'm throwing up a couple of slides here uh, for you to see uh, the diagrams put out by people uh, in, uh, from that perspective that try to explain all the things that happen at the end of the world. Uh, most of it is based on the book of Revelation. As I've taught before uh, in the series on Daniel Revelation, um, the amillennial position, which is uh, everything, pretty much everything in the book of Revelation has already happened. It's happened in the first century. It's written in symbolic language. Um, so if you really want to know what happens at the end of the world, a better place to go um, is uh, the book of um, uh, Thessalonians uh, that uh, uh, Paul has uh, written. Uh, first thing I want to read is in uh, 1 Timothy. That gives you, uh, kind of situates us uh, about what, you know, what is supposed to be taking place uh, at, the, um, at the end of the world or after we die. And Paul uh, says it in First Timothy chapter two verse uh, eleven. He says, "It's a it's a trustworthy statement. For if we died with him, we'll also live with him." So there's the resurrection. And then he says, "If we endure, we'll also reign with him. We'll also reign with him." So he's saying after after death, after we resurrect, uh, our position will be to reign with Christ. And that's where the uh, question uh, came from. Uh, what will we be doing? Well, we will reign with Christ. There's the resurrection, uh, the glorification, where we have uh, glorified bodies given to us. But then there's another step after that, which is the exaltation, meaning exalted to the right hand of God, where Jesus is. That's, that's what he says. We'll reign with him. Well, reign where? Well, we'll reign within the Godhead. If we're sitting at the right hand of God with Jesus, we're within the Godhead. And that's where the idea of the exaltation uh, of um, humanity or the believers uh, after death uh, comes from. But uh, I want to talk a little bit more about this, um, you know, premillennial, amillennial stuff. Um, a much simpler way to, uh, you know, to, uh, to understand what takes place uh, after, after death is to go to, uh, as I said, to go to uh, First Thessalonians. Uh, and in First Thessalonians, uh, Paul doesn't use uh, eschatological symbolism. He doesn't use uh, uh, language of the end times. He doesn't use a symbolic language to explain what's going to happen at the end of the world. The Thessalonians had some straightforward uh, questions about, you know, what happens after we die? Will we be, you know, those of us who are still uh, alive, will we go to heaven? And the people who died before Jesus came, will they be left in the grave? You know, they had a... They had a uh, theirs wasn't just a theoretical question. They, they wanted to know what, what exactly will happen. And so Paul answers them in very simple terms. Uh, he says in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, begins in verse 13, he says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep. Asleep meaning those who are dead in Christ, okay, who, who have passed away, believers who have passed away so that you will not grieve, as do the rest who have no hope. Well, who are the ones that have no hope? Well, the ones who don't believe in Christ and who have died. They have no hope for these people. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep with Jesus. Don't be afraid, he says. 
God raised Jesus from the dead. He'll also raise those who are asleep in Christ. He'll also raise those from the dead. So no need to have fear. Then he says, and here comes the very practical way that he explains it, verse 15, he says, For this we say to you uh, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. So uh, those, who, those who are alive in Christ, um, when Jesus comes, they're not going to go to heaven before those who have died in Christ go to heaven. So that was the fear. You know, will we go to heaven and our relatives, our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, will they just stay in the ground? So Paul assures them not to be afraid of that. In verse 15, he says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So the first ones to rise up will be the dead in Christ. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them. So who's, who's going to be caught up? The dead in Christ rise first. They will be caught up with whom? With the, those who are alive in Christ at that moment. And what will happen to them? Uh, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Where will they, where will they meet the Lord? Here on earth somehow? No, no. In the air. And then he says, and so we shall always be with the Lord. So we'll always be with the Lord. They'll always be with the Lord in that status. There's no uh, a thousand years you'll be here and then there'll be a second resurrection and all, you know, all that complicated eschatological guessing that takes place in a lot of the diagrams and a lot of teaching about uh, you know, the second coming of Christ. Uh, Paul makes it simple. So he says, when Jesus comes, everyone will know it. You know, the trumpet, the shout, everyone will, everyone will know. It won't be a secret. Everyone will be made aware. The dead in Christ will rise first. Those who are still alive when Jesus comes will join them. And where will they join them? In the air with Jesus to begin the eternal life. And that's it. We'll be together with him forever. So uh, you, you need to understand the Bible, the Bible talks about the end of the world and gives us uh, events that will take place at, at different times or uh, different events that will take place. But all these events are taking place at the same time. That Jesus comes, that there is the shout or the trumpet, that the dead arise, that the living in Christ are captured with them, that the, uh, uh, the evil are punished and, 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 and sent to their place of punishment, uh, that the heavens and earth that Peter talks about will be dissolved. All of this, all of these things, they're not happening like in real time. Like you know, this year, this is going to happen, and then a you know, hundred years later, that's going to happen, and then a thousand years later, that no. Same thing with the judgment. It's not happening in real time. You know, people standing around waiting for judgment. I wonder when my turn is. You know, when <laughs> when's my turn to go to? There's a long line of it. It doesn't work like that. Those are metaphors. Those are symbols. That's imagery in the Bible to tell us that there will be a, a reckoning, so to speak. The, the key is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, uh, 51 and 52. Let me just read that. Uh, Paul says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We will, he's talking about you know, the resurrection and the time of judgment when Jesus comes. He says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Here's the key, he says. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. So he's kind of repeating here what he said in 1 Thessalonians. What is going to happen? All these events at the end of the world, all of these things will take place in the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. Everything will be done in the twinkling of an eye. One moment you're in this dimension, the next moment you're in the other dimension. One moment this earth, the heavens and earth exist, the next moment it's the new heavens and earth, okay? And those who are caught up with Christ in the heavens, what will they do? Where will they be to answer the original question? Well, they'll be at the right hand of God, reigning with Christ, meaning they will become part of the Godhead in an exalted state. Good stuff, great things to... Uh, look far. I hope that answers some of the questions uh, that you might have about the end of the world and some of the things that take place. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.